everybody. This is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations, and I'm going to do a walkthrough and then a quick tutorial for you on this album. So today what we're doing is we're revising an existing tutorial that I had done before, and that tutorial is my Love Letters Stacked Waterfall Folio that I did back on February 1st of 2022. And it was a design team project for Country Craft Creations using the beautiful Love Letters paper collection. And during that video, I had made a, a blank of the folio and I had kind of stuck it in my stash. And the other day I was looking through my stuff and trying to figure out what I was going to do with things. And I came across it and then I got this great idea. So I thought, well, we're going to revamp that tutorial a little bit. And we're going to create an actual album cover. So instead of making it a folio, it's going to ha be an actual album. And then, um, so I, and then I added some stuff on the inside. But what I'm doing today is using this beautiful collection called Soar from Country Craft Creations. This is a gorgeous butterfly themed collection. When I saw it, I just had to have it. So as soon as it was available, I got it. I also got the um, pack of the gingham papers by simple stories that match this paper collection perfectly and that is also available at country craft creations and i'll have links below down for all of that but um that's what i decided to use for this collection and so what i did was i took the folio and you're going to see that in the tutorial that i have already made and we're going to revise it and create something completely different so um the links are down below. I just wanted to share with you what this looks like all finished and then we'll go into the tutorial. So on the cover here, I used one of the cut aparts here. It says, be your own kind of beautiful. I thought that was absolutely gorgeous. I loved the mason jar on the front of this cover with all the butterflies and the flowers. The flowers do come from my stash, but the colors were absolutely like perfect for this collection. So then on this little butterfly here, I fussy cut it out of one of the pieces of ephemera pe uh, paper that came with the um, paper pack. So I just added that to the flower down here and I just left the cover like this because I just, the paper is so beautiful. I didn't want to cover it up. Um, the ribbon is from my stash and it's this beautiful butterfly ribbon that I thought matched perfectly with the theme of this. I just, there's butterflies everywhere. Um, on the spine, I'm going to show you how I created this little loop so that you could use the charms that I purchased with this paper collection. And then I made one of my own. I had another um, charm piece that I could actually make one of my own. Um, the packs that you get come with two. I did use the jump rings and the lobster claw clasp from my stash. And then I created that one as well. So I made this cute little charm assembly and I'm going to show you how to do it with the ribbons here, which make it really fun. And then you can use your charms on the back of your spine. And then on the back of the book, I use this beautiful pink polka dot paper and then I used one of the cut aparts to say soar right here um, on the back. Um, I did use the pink peony artisan cardstock and the um, coffee brown artisan cardstock. These are both the felt artisan cardstock that's new and it's gorgeous and it cuts and scores and folds like a dream. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So I did um, obviously a ribbon closure and when you open it up, this section here is the actual folio that I created in the previous tutorial. In and of itself, that was the folio. Um, so basically, you're going to remake this using that tutorial, and then we're going to create. Uh, you're going to create a cover, which is the lay flat method. I'll have a link down below for that, and then we're going to create two assemblies for the inside of the covers. So let me show you how this works. So let me show you also. This is the original folio that I did do, and um, this was in and of itself the album. The pockets were on the front um, here, these L-shaped pockets. In this one, we're going to turn it so that they're on the inside, and then you're still going to have your beautiful waterfall assemblies on the inside. So let's go through that. And um, on the inside covers, they're both the same. They mirror each other. You're going to have a tuck pocket here. I wanted to use this um, strip of paper that comes with the paper collection. And I did use the 8x8 too, um, just to clarify that. The two little cut-aparts here fit in this little tuck pocket. And then there's a pocket here. I put one of the bigger cut-aparts here. And then a piece of that gingham paper from Simple Stories that matches everything just perfectly. I created a photo mat for that using the Artisan cardstock. Then it opens like this. 
like this, nice big photo opportunities, and then it opens like that. And then you have a pocket underneath too. So if you wanted to have kind of a secret pocket spot, you could do that as well, okay? And then it just closes like that. And that's on the inside of both covers. So again, a little tuck pocket with the little cut aparts. Aren't they beautiful? The colors are stunning. Another photo mat, and then you have your page flip out here at the top. Okay, and then it opens up like that. So they just basically mirror each other. Um, and then that's that. So then um, here is the actual folio. We're going to basically turn it inside out, and I'll show you that in the tutorial. Then you're going to have your pocket here, and again, a cut apart and a photo mat. And then it opens up. You have this nice big layout page here, and then you have waterfalls. And this is my stacked waterfall, and so I'm going to show you. Um, or in the tutorial, I'll link to the, the original folio tutorial because you're going to make it exactly the same. We're just going to turn it the opposite direction, which I'll show in this tutorial. I hope this doesn't make, you know, everybody confused. Um, but you're going to do that. And then it will adhere the spine of this folio here. Actually, from the inside, is going to adhere right in the middle of the spine of this cover and that's going to be how you add it in so it it's really super easy but it's a nice way to reuse that original tutorial and make something you know completely different so I was kind of like I kind of like this idea so I thought you guys would too um, and then again on the back the pocket here with the cut aparts and the photo mats and then it opens up and then you have another set of waterfalls here. Um, on this page here, um, I did one of the cut aparts and I glued it so that you could put a picture underneath there. It says live every moment, laugh every day, love beyond words. And I just think that's gorgeous. So I decorated it pretty simple. Again, the flowers here are from my stash. I fussy cut out one of the butterflies here and then just glued it to the flower. And then this is one of the cut aparts, backed it on some more of that beautiful coffee uh, felt cardstock and um, put that there and you can uh, put a picture underneath there. All right. So that's kind of the walkthrough of my album. If you look at it from the top here, it will fold out like this. And um, again, it's just a, a, a reimagining of my original tutorial that I did using Country Craft Creations Love Letters. So let's dive into the tutorial and I'll show you how it all goes together. Good morning, everybody. This is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, I have a fun tutorial today that's actually kind of a um, continuation, I guess, or a revamping of a previous tutorial that I did for Country Craft Creations. And what I'm going to do today is use the uh, new paper line Soar by Country Craft Creations, which is a gorgeous butterfly themed paper collection. And I'm going to kind of, um, in a way, recreate something that I have already done before and add to it. So it's kind of a revamping of, um, you know, a previous album. So the previous album that I did use was my uh, stacked waterfall folio tutorial that I did um, using love letters from Country Craft Creations. This was done back in February of 2022, so it's a little bit older, uh, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous album, and it was a folio, so no uh, chipboard cover or anything like that. It had pockets in the front and then in the back, and then when you opened it up, I'll scooch this out of the way for just a second. When you opened it up, you had pockets here that I filled with tags, and then we had this opening here where I added some photo frames here and added tags, and then we have this great waterfall feature. Um, so I was, when I did this tutorial, I made the, the bones of this book, and I kind of put it off to the side, and I hadn't really thought about it you know, and what to do with it yet. So then I was kind of looking through some stuff. I was cleaning up my space and I found the blank. And so I decided to go ahead and cover it using the Sora paper. Okay. And then, um, so, so let's go through that. So I took the, the album base that I made using that particular tutorial and created this. I did use the new, 
um, coffee brown and pink peony papers, the felt artisan cardstock in this album as well. Made some photo mats here. And then when you open it up, you have a nice big pocket. Um, when I purchased Soar, there was a companion pack of papers that they had put together using some simple stories papers and uh, another sheet of pink peony that matched this collection perfectly. So I did use that as well. And then when you open it up, this is what I have so far. So I have this nice big space here. I have my waterfalls. And on these, I did the half inch technique so that you have kind of the continuation of the paper and um, I did the waterfalls. Okay, so then I was thinking, well, how can I kind of jazz this up? Well, then I decided, you know, I'm gonna put it in the cover. So I created this cover and let's look at this. So I did create a chipboard album cover using um, the heavyweight chipboard that's available at the store and then of course, you know, layering it with some pattern papers and things. So let me give you the measurements for this. And I didn't write it down, but it will be down in the uh, description. I'm going to tell you about it as well. So the chipboard here, I used two pieces that are six and a quarter by seven. And then I used a piece that's two by seven for the spine. And then the cardstock to cover is um, two pieces that are eight and a quarter by nine, which cover the front and the back. And then one piece that's five by nine that covers the spine. And then I used a piece that is six by six and an eighth to cover the inside spine. So if you're familiar with the lay flat method, you'll know um, how to do that. There is a link below to my tutorial on how to make the lay flat cover and it worked out great. So I decided to make a cover that I was going to actually stick the folio in here with, okay? So when you open it up, <clears throat> we have the inside spine here, which I just used some pink peony paper and then a piece of the pattern paper over top. And then over here, what I decided to do on the inside covers was create kind of like a, a little folio flip out thing. So um, we have a folio piece. I'm going to show you how to make it for this side today because that's kind of the newest um, piece to this collection. And so I did that. Um, this is a strip, a border strip from the pattern paper. Let me show you. Um, for the paper collection, there's these two great border strips down below. So I cut off one of these and what I did was I cut it in half so it's four inches wide. And then I backed it with a couple pieces of spare cardstock and made like a little tuck pocket to put some of the little cut aparts here. Since I'm using the eight by eight pack, I had some perfect little cut aparts. I backed them on some scraps of the white artisan cardstock that I used for the cover. So those go in here. And then I created another photo mat here. So this is four by six. And then this um, brown on the back of here is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So I just made a nice photo mat. And what that does is that kind of closes these two flaps. So I'm going to show you how again to do this, but I used the pattern paper here. I left the backs open. So they open like that. And then this is a nice big four by six piece that you can put a picture in. And then this opens up as well to have another pocket so you could put more photos back here. Okay. So uh, kind of a simple little folio here, um, but there's going to be one on the inside of each cover. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. And then if you go back to the tutorial, and again, this is my Love Letters Stacked Waterfall Folio tutorial, um, you're going to make this. Now, when I did this, my, um, my imagination was like, I'm going to stick it in the book here and it's going to work great. Well, because of all of the fun stuff on the inside, it didn't lay flat when I did that. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to take this folio and we're basically going to turn it inside out and we're going to adhere it to the book right here. So it will be, it will be different basically. So instead of <clears throat> this first one having the pockets on the outside, um, you know, these, these kind of, um, what you call it L shaped pockets here. Um, they're going to be on the inside. Okay. So we're going to have this glue down in here. It will lay flat. Um, once we get it glued down and then the book will open up like so have your waterfalls and then it will open up like this where you'll have your pockets here and nice photo mat here and then this will be adhered down into the spine of the cover and then you have this part back here 
that will again open up and have your waterfalls okay so that's what we're going to do to kind of recreate this album um we're basically turning the folio inside out and we put a cover and we're going to have it in its own cover so that's what we're going to be doing today um so again it's kind of a recreation of a tutorial that i've already done before so this again is the lay flat album method and um, I just gave you the measurements. They are written down below. Um, this ribbon here I had for my stash. I loved this paper with the mason jar and it's just gorgeous. Um, haven't really decided how I'm gonna cover this album yet. I did the back with this pink polka dot that I just absolutely adored. And then I have a really fun spine piece that I'm gonna show you. But first off, let's go ahead and do the inside cover uh, piece for your album. So for that, you're going to need a couple things. So this is the strip. I just cut that strip off the bottom of that page, cut it in half so it's four inches. And then I cut a piece of pink um, to back it. And let me grab my ruler here. So the pink here is four and a quarter, and then it measures seven eighths because the strip of paper is five eighths inch. And then the brown piece is four and a half by one and an eighth now so measure your strips and make sure um i believe let's see the two strips are the same so just make sure um you know that you measure your cardstock so for this i did i added an extra quarter of an inch for each layer that's going to be your little tuck pocket i have two more of these cute little cut aparts the little tiny ones these little cut aparts measure two by <clears throat> excuse me my allergies are really bad right now two by two and five eighths so i measured the cardstock um two and a quarter by two and seven eighths and i just back them simply with that and then um you're gonna need your pieces here so i have my pattern papers all ready to go and let's see here these are my flaps let me kind of get this kind of organized here and um, I did do a photo mat, so this is four by six. And then the the um, actual cardstock, excuse me, is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So we have that piece, and we have all of our um, pieces. So let me get this out of the way. The first thing you're going to need <clears throat> is a piece of cardstock. And again, I use the pink peony uh, felt artisan cardstock that's new in the store. And you're going to put it in your scoreboard. It's uh, six and one eighth by eleven and three eighths. Okay, so six and an eighth by eleven and three eighths. You're going to put it in your scoreboard, eleven and three eighths at the top, and we're going to score at four and a half. Okay, and then just simply fold that down. Okay, that's going to be the top flap of your. Um, little folio piece there then you're going to need two pieces and I kind of already prepared these with by um, corner edging these but these are five by four and a half and you're going to make two of these and you're going to take on the five and score at one half okay so each of these will be done the exact same way they're five at the top four and a half score at one half okay so you need two of those and then you're going to need a piece for the pocket so each of the pockets will be seven and an eighth by two and seven eighths. So on the two and seven eighths, you're going to score at half, and then you're going to turn it on the seven and an eighth, you're gonna score at half, and you're gonna score at six and five eighths. Okay, so you have your half inch on the three sides. Then what you're going to do, is grab a pair of scissors and we're going to prepare our pieces so we're going to have our pocket we're going to miter our quarters and i'm going to cut real sharply in the corners just to kind of decrease bulk at the pocket there and then let's fold and burnish i love these colors they're just so beautiful and springy i think they're super pretty Okay, so we're gonna fold and burnish and then grab your 
piece here. Now this is the piece that's going to basically just lay inside your cover here. What we need to make sure is that the pocket and the flap here, let me take these out for just a sec, the pocket and the flap don't overlap because you want to be able to stick that tag in there. So you want to make sure that that um, doesn't overlap. So what we're going to do is dry fit this and make sure that that flap will open, okay? So we wanna make sure that there's nothing hindering that pocket and that we have the edge available to go ahead and do this, okay? So I'm just going to lay this down and just make sure. If you need to trim off a sliver to make sure that this fits, um, you can do that. So I'm looking at this, the flaps folded down, the pocket is right at the bottom edge, and I do have a very, very slight gap and nothing's overlapping. So you gotta make sure you do that before you glue it down. And then I'm gonna just grab my glue here and I'm gonna put a little glue down at the bottom. And just make sure we still have our little gap. And then, Glue that down. Now, if you want to conserve paper, you can do the little tape trick over this bottom edge here so that you only have to do pattern paper up here. But I did cut a piece that's going to go all the way down into the pocket, so I'm not going to worry about that today. But if you want to, that's why you glue the bottom tab first, and then you'll put a piece of tape over that edge, and that'll help with your pockets. And then it'll save you a little bit of pattern paper. But I'm just going to go ahead and um, put the pattern paper completely down inside because then it covers all of my tabs, including the side tabs, and then I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so that's basically that flap. Now let's put this aside for a second. Here's your pattern paper, or your pattern paper, your cardstock. So this is the five by four and a half, and you're gonna have that half inch score here. So we're gonna fold and burnish and miter those corners. And then I did edge punch because I felt like it. Um, you don't have to, if you don't want to, you can corner around it, but I just did a nice little edge punch there. Okay. And we're going to do this with both pieces. So fold and burnish. So this is a fun way to use that album blank that I made during that tutorial. Cause it's been sitting there for, you know, over a year now and, um, kind of recreate it into something, um, different. So one flap is going to go on one side. One flap is going to go on the other. And again, dry fit and just make sure everything fits nicely because you don't want any flaps, you know, overlapping anything. And I'm just kind of making sure that that's going to fit nice. And it is. Nothing's going to um, get bothered by that. So then we're going to put just glue on that. And we're going to lay that down. Now, if you want, you can open it. Makes it a little bit easier to lay that down. Line that up, one on each side. Okay. Okay. And then we have this one. We're gonna put pattern paper on just the front. So I'm gonna leave the back open for photos. So I'll have the links to my lay flat album cover method. And then I will have a link to the Love Letters Stacked Waterfall Folio because that's basically the base of it. We're just gonna turn it inside out. So we have this piece here. Um, this is the tag that I've already prepared. That's what's going to close those. All right, so now we just have to kind of put the pattern papers on. So I'm going to do it opposite of what I've already done. Um, so I want my purple paper here and I want this paper here. Okay. So it'll be opposite of what we did here and you can close those either way you want. Have whichever one you want on the top is fine. I'm really loving this paper though. The, the blue and the green are just and blue and greens are my favorite colors. So, you know, just gorgeous. I love this paper just love this paper so using my art glitter glue I've already prepared my paper I've cut it 
an eighth of an inch smaller than the piece that I'm covering, okay? And um, I did edge punch, obviously, the corners there. So just make sure when you get your paper set how you want it, you edge punch the proper edge, okay? And we'll do this. And then again, I left the backs of these flaps blank. It was so hard to pick which paper to put on top. I mean, honestly, so pretty. Um, I did, I used the eight by eight paper pack for sore and I did use a lot of it. I'll show you what I have left over um, to do this. Okay. Okay, just making sure that that is good. Okay, so each flap ends up after we score it to be four and a half by four and a half. So the pattern paper is four and three eighths by four and three eighths. Okay. Then when you open it up, you have these two tabs. And what I ended up doing was to cover those with this. And this piece of pattern paper is six by four and three eighths. Mm -hmm. And on one side, the check or the, you know, the squares are bigger than the other. I kind of preferred the smaller pattern. You can kind of see these are bigger than these. So I kind of preferred the smaller ones to be on top and showing. All right. So that'll cover those little attachments that we made right here. And that goes underneath the flaps like so. So that part is done. Okay. And then we have our pocket here. And for the pocket piece, so once folded, oops, I'm going to, let's see, there are two, two and three eighths inch by six and an eighth. So I have two and a quarter by six. And I cut this beautiful piece of paper here. I just love these butterflies. I love this whole pack. Honestly, I need to get another pack because <laughs> it's so pretty. The butterflies are just exquisite. All right, so this goes right on top of here on the pocket. I'm trying to center that. Okay. Lots of butterflies. I just love it. Okay. All right, so there's that. And then we've already prepared my little pocket piece. So I just centered that down below. And I'm going to grab my book because I want to make sure that I get it, you know, pretty um, close to what I did the first time. So I'm just going to kind of center my pocket. I'm going to just glue it on three sides. I thought that was kind of a fun way to use that border piece too. Oops. Just give a little tuck spot here. There we go. Didn't do that very well, did I? And... It's going to be, in the, if I lined it up at the center, about two and a quarter on either side of the zero and about an eighth of an inch up, okay? So just line that up on the two sides, okay? So they match. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm trying to get this tutorial done and I want to get this published. I am going to be leaving on Wednesday to go to Utah for the... Um, the 1950s murder mystery scrapbook retreat and I am super excited about this I am going to have so much fun I just can I just I'm I'm so excited so um, I thought I would get this tutorial out before I go okay so now what I'm going to do is put this pattern paper down on the inside here on the top flap and I chose this beautiful paper here and these basically mirror each other on both sides. So, yeah. And then I was going to tell you that, um, yeah, I wanted to get this tutorial done. I'm going to the retreat in Utah, the 1950s murder mystery retreat. And it's going to be absolutely amazing and fun. And if you ever get a chance to go to one of these retreats, please do. Did I do that upside down? I sure did. Hold on, try not to rip my paper. There we go. Okay, let's try that again. I could hear you screaming at me. 
Yep, that's a good thing. Art Glitter Glue does give you a second to be able to move stuff around, so that was good. Otherwise, I would just grab another paper and then just cover it. Let's see. That's more better. Okay, there we go. That's more better. Okay. I feel like I'm babbling in this video. I've got lots of things in my brain getting ready for the retreat. So if you haven't checked out a retreat, I'm going to put a link down below where you can go to Country Craft Creations and look at the retreats. Um, they have virtual retreats. They have in-person retreats. And then if you are lucky enough to be in the Utah area next to the actual physical store, you can do retreats or uh, crops and things, classes and stuff at the store, which is amazing. All right, so then I just cut my piece there. I'm just putting it in there, and then I'm going to put my glue down. You don't need to glue inside the pocket because that pattern paper will stay down, but you do need to glue up here. Like so. Okay. All right. So that's that piece right there. And then you have your tag to keep that closed. And then you have your little tuck pocket here for your little pieces that come with the kit. So then let's grab our cover. And this basically will lay right here, okay? So I'm going to just turn this over, add my art glitter glue. This pink peony paper is so pretty. It's so pretty, it's so nice to have a pink artisan cardstock and I got to tell you it folds scores and everything like a dream it's just gorgeous all right so I'm just going to lay this down on my cover centering that let me turn it so I can see it really well okay okay and then what I can do is open that up make sure that nothing gets glued down that's not supposed to get glued down right I use my bone folder make sure I got a good stick okay double check the top make sure I don't have glue where I don't want it and that's that's all there is to that so that's how we kind of decorated the cover of our album okay so let's put our pieces back in like so, let's grab our other side. So I matched everything. And I just love how this turned out. I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. So you have your little tuck pockets and everything. So then we're gonna grab our folio. Now remember, when you make this, when you go back to the other tutorial, it's made so that this L-shaped pocket here is in the front. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this around like so, so that we can actually make it lay down flat. If you try to make it lay flat this way, it's not gonna do it because there's so many pieces on the inside. It just isn't gonna work. So this is how we're gonna give this album a different look, okay? So we're gonna turn it so that you have your flaps like so, and then you have your waterfalls here, okay? So it will lay flat, you can see that. It will lay flat in this way. So then we're just gonna add glue here and then glue it right to the middle of my book or my cover, I should say, my spine. Okay, so this this is the tricky part. I'm lining this up on my grid. I'm gonna grab my ruler. I'm gonna try and make sure that this is lined up really nice. So I've got the edge of my chipboard on the black lines here and I'm trying to use this to help make sure that I get this right. The center of my book, or my cover, I should say, is like at three and a half. So I get this right. I'm lining up the black lines there at three and a half. So it should have a half inch gusset. And this should land 
at three and a quarter, okay? And again, this is the tricky part. And if you want to actually do this before you add your pattern papers, it will probably be a little bit easier to do. And somehow I got that on the other side. So I'm just laying this down and then I'm gonna grab my bone folder and I'm just gonna go inside and make sure that gets stuck. Okay, and then you can open this up, lay it down, there we go. A little bit tricky, but it can be done. Okay, made it look absolutely as complicated as it possibly could, right? <laughs> yes, good morning. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't even think it's seven o'clock here yet. I sent Hubbin off to work and I started working on this. Okay, so you can see, I do have a half inch gusset here and I've got that laid down. Okay, so you just have to be careful with it. All right, again, probably a lot easier to do before you put all the pattern paper down. Um, but hey, you know, Sometimes I don't do things very simply. Okay. All right. And that should be that. Okay. I'm going to lay that down. Probably could have taken everything out of the pockets too because then it wouldn't have, you know. There we go. All right. So I'm going to let this set and dry for just a second. And then we're going to talk about the spine piece. So... The spine piece here is, I think this turned out really cute. So um, what I wanted to do was use two of the, the charms that came with the paper collection that I purchased. So I did purchase these and they're just absolutely beautiful. Well, I wanted a third charm and I went in my stash and I had some jewelry making things. So this particular thing um, in the dome came with or it's from my stash, but I thought it matched really perfectly. And then I did add a chain with a lobster clasp. And I was like, well, how am I going to put this on the actual spine? So what I ended up doing was I cut my cardstock and my pattern paper to fit my spine. So for this particular piece, the pink is two inches wide. The brown is one and three quarter inches wide. And then my pattern paper is one and a half inches wide. And it measures, let's see, the pink is six and seven eighths tall. The brown is six and five eighths tall. And the pattern paper is six and three eighths inch tall. And I did use the corner punch here. And then what I ended up doing was I, I dropped down about, was it three quarters of an inch? And I punched holes and set eyelets. And then on the back side, I thread a small piece of ribbon through and attached them here. And then that is what gave me this loop to go ahead and put my lobster clasp on to hang my charm. Okay. I hope y'all can see that. So when I put it through the loop, I just added a little bit of slack there just to make a little bit of a loop. And then with that lobster claw, once I made the charm assembly and I just added, used jump rings, whoops, on a chain, um, and then I just took and hooked that to the ribbon. Okay. So then this piece here is going to go on the outside spine. Like so. And then that will give me my little charm assembly on that, on the backside. So I'm going to take this off for just a second so that it's easier to put on. Okay, so again, just measure down three quarters of an inch, and then I put in two different, you know, two eyelets, and then I just thread a small piece. This is like that grow grain ribbon, so you want to use something that's a little more heavy duty um, through there, and um, I secured it on the back with a bunch of score tape, and then we're going to glue it as well, okay? So I'm just going to take that backing off and grab my art glitter glue. Like so, 
And I am going to glue this really well so I make sure that it stays where it's supposed to. Okay, and then I'll lay that down on my spine. Get that nice and centered. And now I would suggest letting this dry a little bit before you put the charm on there because you want to make sure that everything's nice and dry and has a good stick, right? And use your bone folder, make sure that everything is stuck down really nice. All right. Yeah, so there you go. So there's that um, spine piece right there. So you can see when you put your book up there, you got that little loop. I'm going to make sure that dries a little bit, and um, then you have your book. So when you open it up, then you'll have your assembly here that we just made. So you have your little pockets here. You have your tag here. It opens up like that, and then it'll open up like that. Okay. So we put those little guys in there. And then you have our stacked waterfall folio that we've kind of basically done inside out in a different way so it gives it a whole different look to the book which is awesome and it gives it a whole new look because we put it in the cover too so we have our waterfall folio here and we have a pocket here with another big tag and then it'll open up you have two pockets here and then you can do all kinds of different things here you could add um, a photo frame here you could add another pocket if you wanted to there's you know the it the possibilities are absolutely endless. And then um, when you turn it this way, you have another pocket here, okay? And it will hold a nice big four by six photo. So, you know, that's good. And then um, you open it up here and then you have another waterfall section that has just a ton of places for folios or for photos, excuse me, I can't talk today. And then you have your other little tuck pocket here. You have your other pocket here and then your other little, um, you know, flip out area here. So um, that is kind of the recreation of my stacked waterfall folio. When you open it up, you have just lots and lots and lots of room for pictures. And I like the fact that you have like an inch space here. You can do some really good dimensional stuff here. So I'm gonna do a little decorating and I'll show you some pictures of that um, as well. And then um, we can go ahead and attach, I think our charm device here. So this is just a really fun way of adding a charm assembly. If you don't have like the little metal things that I've used in the past, it's just another way of, um, you know, being able to do that and just attach your charms. And there you have it. So that is my SOAR stacked waterfall album. And I think that's what I'm going to call it. My SOAR stacked waterfall mini album. I like it. Uh, so go check out my other tutorials. Thanks for putting up with my um, craziness this morning. Again, it's pretty early. Go to Country Craft Creations and check out this paper collection. It's absolutely gorgeous and I just absolutely love it. And um, go check out the retreats as well because I will be um, doing that and there are going to be lots of future um, in-person and virtual retreats available. So please go check that out at Country Craft Creations. Dot com. So thanks for watching. I will see you again soon with more tutorials. Bye-bye.